What exactly is a global shutter? And why do you need it in your camera? Or do you even need it? in your camera. Since the beginning of time, cameras have had mechanical shutters, meaning there's this curtain inside your camera in front of the film or in front of the sensor that opens and closes to allow light in. Now this curtain or shutter moves as fast as 1 250th of a second. That is the fastest speed at which it can reveal the entire film or the entire image simultaneously. At any shutter speeds faster than 1 250th of a second, the curtain narrows to decrease the amount of time your image is exposed and sequentially expose your film or your sensor from top to bottom. When digital cameras came along, the shutter became even more important, especially for photos, because sensors were limited in how fast they could read out information or how fast they could transfer light into an electronic signal. Now, maybe you've seen those videos where you can see the blades of a helicopter or the wheels of a car, or maybe you've seen a soccer ball or someone swinging a golf club where it looks like it's being warped. Now this occurs because sensors read out line by line or pixel by pixel. And when the object moves faster than the sensor can read out, you get that warping or that rolling shutter effect where vertical straight objects all of a sudden look slanted. The problem is made worse in higher resolution cameras. Typically high res cameras like the Sony a7R or the GFX 100 would be more susceptible to rolling shutter at higher resolutions because there's more megapixels or more data to transfer from the sensor into the raw file or into a video file. Now, global shutters aren't new. They've actually existed in larger, more expensive cinema cameras that have purpose-built sensors or purpose-built hardware for video. Now, you pay tens of thousands, if not more, for that camera so that you don't get that rolling shutter jello effect. Now, some cameras like the Canon R3 or the Nikon Z9 or Sony's A1, these top tier mirrorless cameras have what is known as a stacked sensor. Whether your camera has a regular sensor or a stack sensor, sensors actually have multiple layers. Layers designed to filter color, layers designed to transmit data, but perhaps the most important layer of the sensor is the photodiode. That's the part that actually detects the light. Now in a stack sensor, the photodiode is moved kind of from the middle of the sensor, closer towards the front of the sensor or closer towards the lens where the light is coming from. Now, a stack sensor also has additional layers of connectors. So instead of a single pathway to transfer data, there are actually multiple pathways or multiple connectors to take the signal from the photodiode and convert it into an electronic signal. This means that the whole process of reading out the sensor or converting light into that electronic digital signal occurs much faster. With the latest Sony A9 Mark III, they've made this conversion process so fast that the readout of the sensor is effectively instantaneous. This means that it's a perfect camera for anything high speed, action sports, you know, moving objects, or simply just spraying and praying. There's no LED flicker, there's no banding, there is no rolling shutter, and basically as many photos per second as the camera's buffer and your memory card will allow. One of the reasons why this is possible with the Sony A9 Mark III is because it has a lower resolution, lower resolution 24 megapixel sensor, as opposed to a much larger 45 or 60 megapixel sensor, which would require more hardware and more bandwidth to read out that sensor and gather all of that extra pixel data. Now, practically speaking, most of us don't need to shoot photos at 120 frames per second. And if you're just a photographer, you probably don't care too much about the video benefits of a global shutter. Because a global shutter can read out instantaneously you're able to shoot at a much wider range of shutter speeds when shooting with a flash or a strobe, and you no longer have to worry about high speed sync. 
This also means that when shooting with flash, you have more options when selecting a shutter speed to get that perfect exposure or balance the lighting within your scene. The idea is that eventually global shutters will completely eliminate the need for a mechanical shutter, making cameras more durable and potentially less expensive. Because not only are mechanical shutters extremely fragile, but they're often the first component inside of your camera to break and need replacing. So while global shutters might be a niche feature inside of high-end sports cameras or cinema cameras right now, don't be surprised if in a few years time, every camera being sold has a global shutter. And until the next one, go shoot photos.